And good evening, New Mexico. It really seems like this political landscape is changing by the seconds, even by the minutes these days. Yeah, so in just more than a week's time, former President Trump survived an assassination attempt, and then President Biden, of course, dropped out of the race for the White House. That last part almost certainly clears the path for Vice President Kamala Harris to officially become the Democratic nominee. In fact, reports tonight indicate that she has already secured enough delegates to formally win the nomination. But with only three and a half months to go until Election Day, there is still a lot that can happen until it's time for voters to actually go and make that final decision. A lot of people have wondered if the current political climate could put our state in play for the first time since George W. Bush was running for office. So let's bring in our Griffin Rushton, like always, he has some insight for us, Griffin. Yeah, I mean, well, there's only one thing that is certain right now, and that is, is that New Mexico will contribute five electoral votes to whichever candidate wins our state's popular vote. Now, they're going to have to win 270 electoral votes to win, so New Mexico isn't necessarily going to make or break this election, but there could be some interesting takeaways here. Now, it's too early to know exactly how New Mexicans are feeling about a potential Kamala Harris presidency, but it's safe to assume the Democrats have a pretty strong base here in New Mexico. Our state has gone blue in the past four presidential elections with at least a five point lead each time. Now, President Biden actually won in 2020 with an 11 point lead, uh, but it appears that allegiance is being tested. The most recent public policy poll from before the first debate only gave Biden a seven point lead and polls from conservative think tanks around the same time had even smaller leads. Now, President Biden's debate performance performance almost certainly pushed some moderate voters closer to the middle, but we're dealing with a different lineup now. And UNM political science professor Tim Krebs expects a Kamala Harris ticket will certainly make an impact with New Mexico voters. I think she's going to get, you know, a bump with uh, with female voters. I think, you know, the one question mark I think would be probably be with Latino men. Uh, who have been a little bit more uh, supportive of the former President Trump. And so we'll see what their reaction uh, is, is, is going to be to this, this development on the Democratic side. Um, and so that, that, that to me is a, a sort of a question mark. I don't think that in the end that you know, Trump will win the state, but it could be a tighter election. Um, and so that's, that's, that's my guess right now. Again, you know, everything we're talking about right now is a lot of speculation based on New Mexico's past elections. And a lot happened over the past four years, including historic decisions on abortion access and record breaking numbers of migrants arriving at the U.S. border with Mexico. Now, Vice President Harris was at one point expected to oversee a lot of those immigration issues for the Biden administration. And Krebs believes that will definitely come up before Election Day because of uh, Vice President Harris's profile on this issue in the Biden administration, uh, she was definitely and is still vulnerable on it. She's going to get attacked on it for sure. Waiting to hear, uh, we're still waiting to hear what VP Harris has to say about border issues. And that's just one of the things we're waiting to hear from her about. People don't really know who Vice President Harris is. There are a lot of voters out there who are like, yeah, I don't really have a good sense of, of who this person is, what they, what they stand for, what their style is, what their background is, all those kinds of things. So the big takeaway tonight is that New Mexico not likely to be a battleground state, but Krebs says that doesn't mean that Democrats should assume that they have the land of enchantment in the bag, at least right now. Yeah, it seems like the political experts, despite what the governor said on a phone call with other governors and President Biden, doesn't seem like we're going to go red. But again, there's 105 days left to go. So exactly. we'll see what happens in November. Griffin, thank you so much.